Just for curiosity, I bought TPA3251 board. It was priced for, for 12 euros and uh, shipping to my country about uh, 6.5 euros. So total costs about uh, 18 euros, including shipment. Insane price, insane price. Also, I was surprised that uh, a shop mentioned that uh, they produced hundred thousands of those boards. So I, I bought it uh, just to compare it with the TPA thirty two fifty five, which is taking market by storm on this on those uh, budget boards. And I will make a quick uh, overview and uh, quickly measure basic parameters uh, and do some visual inspections. Here you can see basic marketing positioning and uh, I would say everything is is fine here with uh, with promotions probably except uh, output power. There are some specifics that uh, comp all components are soldered to the board and for me it's a good sign because I have a guess that those boards which you are receiving with uh, replaceable operational amplifiers it's easy to uh, to put a fake ones and operational amplifiers are very easy to to fake uh, put some low quality operational amplifier because the only thing what you should do is uh, put different uh, different prints on a package it's very easy and especially if you put uh, external capacitor on a feedback then you practically can use any operational amplifier uh, and it will, it, it will work so when they are uh, soldered on, on a board uh, that's a good sign and they also emphasizing that uh, this those are any 5532 from texas instruments because i i, I really found that uh, there are many fake any 5532 chips uh, in a market and uh, we can only guess uh, such huge electronic market as, as china they have access to leftovers and uh, very very cheap batches on uh, operational amplifiers and then you can uh, reduce the costs for those boards because the board costs are insane low insane low um, the board is stated uh, that it can operate from uh, dc from 12 volts to 36 volts and uh, 36 volts are absolute maximum and uh, 12 volts uh, is great that uh, you can make some battery based amplification systems and also you can put this board in a bridged configuration to work with a two ohm load let's take a closer look to the board itself okay here is this board insane on budget insane 12 euros impossible and look those are good components those are good uh, connectors much stronger than uh, than many other what i what i saw industrial grade inductors normal film capacitors somewhere it may say that those are not the best ones but those are good those are good for class d audio amplification those are excellent a large size inductors for uh, uh, voltage down converters i would say exceptionally good uh, heat sink it is taken from computer industry because this is a really advanced heatsink for graphic cards with built-in fan and if you carefully check that, that um, overall heat dissipation surface is is huge um, this is advanced uh, really advanced uh, heatsink and i i would say it, it could be able to cool also TPA 3255 then operational amplifiers all of them are soldered all connectors honestly I want to see such such board based on uh, TPA 3255 I like it visually I like it two more things you can set input operational amplifier gain if you want to change it for some reason and uh, they made it uh, large through hole uh, resistors it's easy to do for DII people many many interesting uh, and I would say even creative thinking of uh, board de designers I'm impressed really I'm I, I'm, I'm impressed for, for that price something incredible let's measure 
let's measure. I'm really curious, really curious. Okay, let's test it. Uh, I will test it at a maximum uh, power supply of 36 volts. Uh, let's put some input signal. Excellent, nice input signal. And first, uh, let's measure maximum output power, clean output power that we can get with 36 volts uh, power supply. Technically, we can get out 23 volts. I would say even, even for super clean, even a little bit less, 21 volt. Not, we can route it to 20 and uh, we can get uh, clean 100 watts out of this board. With 100 watt uh, amplifier for 20 euros. 100 watt amplifier, crazy. Let's seduce about 10 volts and do some uh, frequency response measurements. Um, and again, all boards so far, all China boards what I measured and compared input signal to output signal, uh, I have reverse polarity, uh, output signal to input signal. So probably there is some reason why, why it is set in this way. Uh, of course, you can, you can wire as you, as you, as you like at, uh, at the end, but maybe there is some something why it is done in this way. Let's put a sweep and check for which frequency this um, board has been tuned. Here is a no load operation. And here is 8 ohms. And you can see, excellent 8 ohms. Perfect. And uh, 4 ohms we have some, some drop. Also this board is set for uh, 8 ohm operation. Practically all China boards what I Currently reviewing, uh, all of them are set for 8 ohm operation, uh, but 4 ohms are uh, good as well. But 8 ohms are absolutely perfect, the best so far. How about a square? Sure, square is excellent for uh, 1 kilohertz, no complaints at all. All around perfect. And the last thing, let's check a ramp. First, let's check on a 100 hertz. Yeah, and what we can see, we can see that this board has a little bit downsized uh, coupling uh, input capacitors. On 100 Hz it should be kind of linear. How about a 50 Hz? Yeah, on a 50 Hz even more. On a 20 Hz, yeah, it's already too much. So this board uh, is using ceramic uh, capacitors and uh, this is probably major shortcut what is done with this board those are audible when i did uh, listening tests the base for this board is kind of kind of okay yeah but uh, it's not that good as uh, tpa 3255 board where uh, everything was done in incorrect way so this is one shortcut uh, what uh, many china boards has uh, they want to somehow skip that uh, input electrolytic capacitor you can save on a board size. Uh, they are using uh, ceramic capacitors, I can only guess, but about uh, 5 or uh, 2 microfarads instead of minimum. Uh, according to the reference design, it should be about uh, 10 microfarads. And then on a the low end, uh, you're a little bit cutting on a low end. Mm. Actually, on a sine wave, you will not. Uh, see that uh, or see it as a, as a really small drop but um, those are impacting dynamics yeah you can see the dynamics of the base is not uh, uh, not linear and the larger is swing larger is impact and the base uh, has practically maximum swing yeah so uh, let's check about the sine wave one kilohertz level so at 1 kilohertz we have 1.4, yeah, 1.4 volts. Now let's look at 100 hertz, then 50 hertz, and then 20 hertz. The blue line is output. Yeah. Here you have uh, 100 hertz, absolutely perfect. The same 10.4 uh, or 10.5 volts. And the 50 hertz the same, no drop. And then the 20 hertz, so we have a small small drop. On a sine wave you don't see that there is uh, any issue. It can really reproduce a low frequencies, but dynamics, if you look at the ramp, 
Ja. Dynamics are jeopardized uh, due to those input capacitors. Is it a big problem? No, probably not. Uh, most of the bass is uh, on 100 Hz. It's not bad, but on 100 Hz it should be perfectly linear. There you can see some uh, major changes. So input capacitors are a trade-off in this board. Otherwise, rest of measurements are perfect. Absolutely great. Absolutely great. Okay. Then summarizing, I bought both boards in uh, one shipment. This is TPA3255. Uh, chipset board with almost similar functionality as uh, this board. And my channel listeners always asking which sounds better. And here I can say with some confidence that this board sounds better. And uh, even this board may be measured a tiny bit better. This sounds better. And uh, each of uh, those boards has some uh, small issues. But if you put uh, this board on a maximum gain, then uh, it performs uh, excellent all around. It also measures uh, better in a lower lower region, it has absolute linearity at 100 Hz and uh, going down even with uh, almost perfect linearity uh, down to 20, 20 Hz. Uh, here we have some uh, little bit uh, low frequency cut, not a critical, and overall running on the same power supply with the same power, with the same voltage at uh, 36 volts, uh, both boards, uh, this board performs uh, better. It has kind of confidence and uh, excellent linearity. Why? Because the rest of components are the same. Yeah, You can see, the rest of com com components are the same. And uh, generally speaking, TPA3255 is the is best uh, chipset in that uh, Texas Instruments lineup. And for me, it's crazy difficult to position it. Yeah, it Overall, it's 10 euros cheaper. This is 30 euros, this is 20 euros, including shipping. But you know, what is a 10 euros? 10 euros are, uh, are four coffees in, 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 my, in my country. Yeah, four Statel or Circle K uh, coffees. If I take coffee with cookie, yeah, then probably two of them. So, yeah, it, it, it's cheaper, but I would say I would recommend to buy TPA3255 instead and find some boards of that. Uh, where this board can go? This can go for solutions where you need 12 volts, uh, battery and power at 12 volts. Otherwise, uh, excellent board. But uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, high quality or, uh, or uh, other stuff, we should work away from clipping. That this board working at 48 volts uh, outperform that another board uh, in all aspects because the whole beauty of quality is based on a working away from clipping. The farther you are away from the clipping, so if you have a 250 watt uh, power amplifier and uh, your mid range is working around uh, 5 watts, so that's ex excellent, super clean watts in case you don't have some extra noise or uh, other stuff. Would I recommend? No, no it's a good board. If you have a scenario where you want to use it, fine. It's also fully finished. You can just put some uh, some plate behind it and then put on a on a wall on a on a on the side of your side of your working table and uh, just uh, add some connectors and you will have excellent gaming amplifier. Yeah, you need a power supply, but there's plenty of power supplies. I would recommend to use this uh, this board with a 32 volt power supply. And then it has a perfect confidence because 36 volts are max. And maybe this is a reason why this board didn't sound so well as uh, as this one, uh, because this was at at the limits and this was on perfectly comfortable uh, voltage and uh, and has the uh, no, most linear uh, way to, to way to work. Uh, also, if we talking about uh, Fun noise, it's very small, but if you put it close, you will hear it. But it's really, really uh, small noise, and environmental noise is even, even, even higher. If you put in a box, no, I will not put even a box. I will put just a plate and uh, and use it as it is because you have all connectors, everything. Those who want to be 
even more advanced you can buy some uh, bluetooth good this is good bluetooth uh, board with a dedicated digital analog converter it sounds uh, fantastic uh, also it allows to use uh, no almost high definition audio you can get the cd quality out of it uh, if you do everything properly then uh, those are perfect match and then you have an excellent budget solution and can work with your uh, your phone uh, and uh, and use other services uh, those are building blocks but i actually prefer this board yeah in my project say i was not able to find a scenario where this board will shine yeah. it's kind of you know everything what is mediocracy is mediocracy and uh, uh, it unless there is no i know 100 unit system or uh, some other where you really save on those uh, 10 euros uh, then it's hard to say that you should buy this one but this is better yeah <laughs> uh, but it's not bad board uh, it's it's a good board it's well designed and uh, maybe you will find uh, some some optimum scenarios how to use it one, as I said, if you if you use it together with a with a Bluetooth and you have volume regulation and you can use a Bluetooth at a maximum volume where it has a best uh, best dynamic range and uh, and uh, this is the right way to to use it, then it could be, it could be.